my new printer came today. My old one was done for. I had it, let's see, my printer was, or my computer was like almost 12 years old, I think, and the printer had to be way more than that. So, anyways, it's time for a new one. And I thought I would try out the HP Smart Tank Plus Wireless All in One. So, we get these, I said, those little cartridges of ink, we get these bottles. And it says up to two years of ink bottles included. And, you know, of course, it's gonna depend on how much you print. But we're gonna give it a try and hopefully it works out good. Anyway, it says it includes enough ink to print up to 6,000 black or 8,000 color pages. And remote printing and scanning with the HP Smart app and reliable connectivity with dual band Wi-Fi. So that'll be good too. What else? Is there anything else on here? No, I don't think there's anything else on the box we need to look at. So, open it up and the ink bottles are right on the top and ooh, they are quite good size. This should have black, look at this. Here's my hand, I've got big hands. Um, I should have got a tape measure. But anyway, this is 135 milliliters and these are 70 millimeter bottles. So that will give you an idea. So this will be nice. And I think these bottles ran around, I don't know, $14 a piece, somewhere around there. And I think was the black one maybe was a little bit more, it might have been 16 but that's without a sale or anything. So I'm sure sometimes it can get a sale. So on the left here, I believe these are probably going to be the print heads. I had read up on this ahead of time and you have to then install them. Uh, I guess because... HP wanted to make sure there wasn't going to be any issues with them moving around or whatever and shipping and so on. So they kept it separate. And then here's the power cord right here. So I'll take that out and I'll be back with you. So I'm just going to lift this out and Myla and Will, of course, are keeping me company <laughs> as usual. <laughs> so we'll pull this out. Oops, and there's instructions that looks like attached here. So we'll take a look at the instructions. Pulled out the power cord, which I'm going to sit over here, and I think these are the print heads. And I'm guessing this one is, goes for the color inks here because this is tricolor, and this is for the black ink. Those are my guesses. But I don't know, I never had to do this before. And here's instructions, and I have to um, remove the printer out of the box now. I won't video that. I have to get these to pull it out. So, but it's packed in there quite good, as you can see. There's some nice foam here to protect it, and lots of tape and plastic here. So, as soon as I get it out, I'll start recording again. Okay. So first, we remove the tape. Oh, there's tape here too. Hmm. Tape back here, and all if you can see, yeah, there. And there, they make it nice and easy for you to get at it too. It, it's folded on the end there, so you have something to grip because you don't have to like pick at it to get the tape off, which is nice. Okay, so we're just gonna set this aside over here, and um. Here's the scanner. This uh, scans and copies to the printer. I think it's always handy at the scanner. Now, I'm not sure. Okay, we'll pull that off. And, 
I'll leave that for now. And then I think, I'm not sure exactly how this opens up here. So we're going to take a look at instructions and I'll be right back. Okay, this opens. There we go. And then we remove the tape. I think this is where the printer heads go. Okay, so I should remove this. Although, it doesn't seem to want to come up. Oh, there. <laughs> there. That was easy enough. Okay, I'm just going to set this aside. And next. Okay, and there's another door here with more cardboard. We get to hold that out. So now we close this door, and then we're gonna close this door. Next, it says to plug in the printer. So there's a little wire around here. And I'll just plug. You can't see back here, but I mean that's pretty obvious where you plug it in. find out. All right, now you gotta turn it on. Is this the power button? Oh look, there's a little piece of tape on the HP here too. <laughs> well, anyway, right now, I think that's the power button. Okay, we gotta take a break because it could take a little while for this to uh, get ready. So it said it could take up to five minutes for the printer to initialize. So, and then we put in the information after that, like the language and time and things like that. Okay, so that didn't take long at all. This flashing, let's see if you can see this. There, see that? That just means it's low on ink, meaning actually there's no ink. I thought it was still initializing. That's what that means. I just found that out in the directions that wasn't on the video that I'm watching. So unscrew the cap of your black ink and then I think a little tab there, just pull it off. There we go. Oops. And I'm just going to set that aside and screw the cap back on. And then Let me open this back up. And let's see, how do I flip that open? Like so. Oops, you can't see. Shoot. Okay, there. I just opened the front cover and then I took this and flipped it open. Okay, so I flip the top and I set this on here like so. Hmm. Oh, here it goes. I can hear it. It's, it's filling up. I can't see anything yet, but I can hear it. Hear it? There it goes. Now you can see. See the line rising right here? So you fill it up. And then I'll do the same for the colors. But I don't think you need to watch me do it because you do it exactly the same. Okay, it's getting up there. The only thing is I can't see how empty the bottle is. I don't know if it takes the whole bottle or not. So, okay, it's not... Um, I don't hear any more gurgling, so I'm getting, oh, it feels like it emptied the whole bottle. So, it feels like there's a little bit left in here, just a few dribbles, so. Okay, that's done. I think I dripped a little piece. 
Yep, a little drip of ink there. It's 1.30. Okay, and then just put the cap back on like that. And then you do the same for each of the colors, which right there here, or right there. There's the blue. And I'll get the blue and do the blue with the red and the yellow. There we go, doing the blue. The red. And the yellow. There it goes. Okay, now we'll close. Now we open the front head access door, and this has gone to the center where it needs to be. And okay, take the handle, which is boy, oh boy, I don't know if you can see this. There, right here, and turn it clockwise. Okay, I've got it clockwise. Turn it all the way clockwise. So the arrow is pointing down, then pull and remove this piece right here. Okay, now we take the tri-color print head on the packaging, and we pull off this orange tab. Oh, yep, yep, I'm gonna, there we go. And we pull this tape off. Avoid touching this and this. And we slide it in like so. Hopefully you can see this. Okay, I do believe I have it in. I don't know what E3 means, but we do the same with the black printhead. We shall pull this off, the little tab, and remove the tape, avoid touching this. So see where those little metal dots are? That's the part that aims toward the back. Not the point that out, and then like the nozzly part is toward the front. So just grip it from the sides and slide it in. I'm sorry, this room is so dark, you probably can't see, but when you do this, you will see exactly where it goes. And you push it in, okay, do you hear it click? And now we pull the blue, oops, what the heck? Okay, so they kind of want to pop out until you pull this blue lever down after you install. So be careful when you're trying to put your black in, the blue one wants to fall out. And then just push that blue lever down. Hopefully we've got that right now. I'm thinking that one's staying in there, right? It's not. There. Okay. Oh, I don't think it's in there right yet. Come on, isn't that in there right? Just takes a little monkeying around. Just make sure you snap those print heads in really good and pull that lever down really good. I was just being a little too gentle putting the print heads in and pulling that blue lever down. Oops. Okay, slide the paper and then that little blue lever I showed you, just push it all the way 
to the right so it's touching the edge of the paper. Okay, and now the alignment is going on. It's picking a piece, piece of paper. Okay, next, I put it inside the scanner here. So it says to take this page now and put it in the left side corner right here. Oops, hold on, we shall let you see. There, you see the little white corner mark? Put it there. Then we close the cover and we press I believe it's this button. It's our scan copy button. Hopefully that's the right thing. Oh, so that's in black and white, or you could do this one, which I'm guessing is in color. Should we check? That's what it looks like. All right. Next step is hooking it to my computer. And that'll probably be very, depending on what kind of computer you have, so. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture from my computer. This is Myla giving my little grandson, Roman, a kissy. So I'm going to file and print. I don't wanna make a hole. Do a four by six. Oops, here. I gotta change this to four by six. There we go. Let's do four by six borderless. And we'll fill, fill it in. So we'll click this one right here. Next we'll click print, but first I have to put the paper in the back of the machine. Okay, so it says four by six over here. So I'm gonna put the paper in there and then I'm gonna move the bloat. There's a little blue lever here, so we'll just move the lever over. Oops, we don't want to curl up the paper though. Okay, paper's in. I'm going to head over to the computer and just click print.
machine's pretty quiet once it starts printing anyways. It's very quiet actually, compared to my own machine. Machine, uh, it takes up about maybe about the same amount of space as my old machine, but it's lighter weight. It's easier to move around. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I mentioned that it's not just the printer, it also scans and copies. So that's always a nice handy feature to have, I think. Unless you, you know, have a printer at work that you use and you don't need to use one at home. But So I did a fine print, so it's going to go a little slower than a quick little... I could have done a not as fine quality and it would have gone faster, but here it is. Now, uh oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's kind of nice. You get a little place to hold, <laughs> hold it. I thought I had set it for borderless, but um, let's let this sit for a minute so now. This probably wasn't the best photo to choose either because it was in dark conditions and I used my phone. So, but you can see it prints. And the color looks right. It's just, uh, it wasn't a good photo to choose. People just realized this paper is like ancient. <laughs> so that might have a little bit to do with it too. So... Anyway, a few minutes will look a little bit better too. But here's an example, anyways. Okay, we're gonna take uh, use another picture here from I took this last summer of a cicada with my camera. Now I still only have the old photo paper, and I know sometimes old old photo paper and it's old. It's been sitting around for years. Doesn't necessarily work the best, but we will give it a try. Sorry about the glare here too. But if I close the drapes there, it's so dark in here. So I'm just going to choose this photo. File. Print. Oopsie. Oh, that's why. Look, it was 4x5 borderless. Ah, I didn't know there was such a thing. I thought it was 4x6. There we go. 4x6 borderless. There we go. Glossy photo paper, fine fill. Oops, here I should show you there. And uh, print. And here we go. And print. So it's printing now. I also forgot to tell you. There's an app on your phone, so you can print photos off your phone using the app. I don't know if you'd like to see that. If you do, I can make another quick little video showing you how to do it. I did it, um, where is the photo? Oh, here's a photo I took of Willa. Uh, with my phone, so I took this off my phone and I sent it to the printer from my phone and it even has a little editing thing so I was able to add her name. You could choose, you know, the font you wanted and color and thing like that. So I chose pink and so there you go and if you want to see how to do that, although it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, it was really easy. There's really nothing to it. So Here we go again, as I say, we're doing another 4x6. This one photo was taken, I took with my camera. And uh, still using that same old photo paper though, so if it doesn't look all that great, that could be a possibility of why. So we've got a bunch of snow, we were supposed to get like Oh geez, a foot or more, which we didn't get that much. And uh, 
now we might supposed to get some freezing rain. Okay, that turned out pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look as nice as it does on a 5K computer screen, but <sighs> there you go. So here's a picture of a cicada I took last summer. All right. So I hope you um, enjoyed my little tutorial tutorial here from someone who's never installed printer heads before. And uh, so it was a little bit of monkeying around getting the printer head in, printer heads in. You just had to make sure it got snapped in good and then pull that liver down good too. I was so afraid I'd break something. So anyways, the harder part was uh, for some reason my computer didn't want to find the, or the printer or whatever didn't want to find the internet and the computer or whatever, but it eventually started working. So thanks so much for watching and um, oops, sorry, I bumped you. <laughs> So, let's see how this looks. They are in the light. They are, there we go. It's just the lighting so bad in here. So now I'm in front of the window. You've got the reflection glaring here now, but here you can see the color a little better. I hope uh, this is picking up the beautiful sparkly effects that are on this insect. It's really cool in that vibrant green. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.